Hello and welcome to On My Bookshelf. And in this episode, I'm going to be taking a look at Light and Lands Evolving Landscapes. Evolving Landscapes is a book from a company called Light and Land. This company was founded by Charlie Waite, who you may well know from the competition Landscape Photographer of the Year. Light and Land specialise in photography, holidays, tours and workshops, and they've been on the go for about 25 years now, and this book is a celebration of that. Some of the photographs in the book have already featured in a gallery exhibition in London, um, but it is moving on to Joe Cornish's gallery in April 2019, so if you're in the area, that's probably worth checking out. But let's take a look at the book. Evolving Landscapes is a soft cover book. I'm not sure how many pages it is. Unfortunately, the pages aren't numbered, but it features some of Light and Land's photography tutors in there. It's got a short bio about each one and a selection of their photographs. As you would expect from a book from Light and Land, the tutors featured are pretty high profile, well-known established landscape photographers. Let's take a closer look at a few of them. The first image I'm going to pick out from the book is this one from Anthony Spencer of, of the dunes in Namibia. Absolutely fantastic image there with all that low level cloud and mist. And these really strong lines here from the top of the dunes as they lead you through the image. A really fantastic and inspiring image. Then there's this close up image here from Ben Osborne. Um, I mean, this was actually taken in Scotland and I didn't know landscape looked like this in Scotland. This stone here and all its different colours, it almost looks like a kind of Dragon's Egg, it's a really interesting image. That's a good thing about some of these photography books is you uh, see images that you didn't think were either even possible to, to create in locations that you may, may well know, or it just gives you ideas of how to photograph the landscape in different ways. Of course, the book wouldn't be complete without one image from Joe Cornish. And here we have the classic view of the Lake District here. Absolutely beautiful colors and big drama in the sky. Very much a Joe Cornish image. Now the book isn't just all about big vista landscapes. We've got this image here from Val de Bailey, which is obviously a much more artistic and impressionistic photograph, but it just shows you the kind of variety of images that you've got in this book. You know, looking at photographs from different types of subgenres of landscape photography, it's really kind of got a broad spectrum of uh, different landscape photographs and photographers. And my final image is perhaps my favorite. It's this one here from Paul Sanders. Now you may recognize the name Paul Sanders from the popular photography podcast, The Togcast. Um, if you haven't given it a listen, search it out, give it a listen. It's a really good photography podcast. Anyway, on to the image. I really like this image. I mean, it's not even the type of image I would necessarily take this kind of um, fine art, minimalistic image here. Very graphic in its nature, it's got the the, the fence posts here, they disappear off into the distance or to the snow. Then you've got this beautiful tree here. And I'm, I'm not sure whether these are, are branches or are parts of an old fallen tree that are leaning against it. And, and all this negative space, it just really sp speaks to me, this image, I, I really like this. So now that we've taken a look at the book, let's ask the question, is this a book that should be on your bookshelf? Well, unfortunately, I think the answer to the question is probably no. Let me tell you why. First of all, let's say it's nothing to do with the photographers or the photographs. The photographers featured in this book are obviously first class, top of the game landscape photographers. And the quality of the photographs is phenomenal. There are some truly inspiring photographs in that book. Some really beautiful classic landscape images as well as a good selection of close ups and artistic and fine art photographs. No nothing wrong with the photographers, nothing wrong with the photographs. It's more to do with the substance of the book. Okay, let me explain what I mean by the book lacks a bit of substance. How the book reads, it's a bit like a sort of A to Z directory of light and land photography tutors. They all appear in alphabetical order. I mean, that could, could just be coincidence. But there's nothing really there to teach you about uh, the photographers or the photographs they've taken. Sure, they've got a sort of brief bio and then a selection of maybe two or three of their pictures but there's no commentary or, or no information about the pictures. There's no technical information. Now I know, you know, seeing the technical information is not for everyone. So, you know, if that wasn't there, that, that's fine. But I would have liked to have seen um, some commentary from the photographers about the photographs that have been selected in that book. Something to help me, not just so I'm looking at the photograph and learning from it, but I can understand what was going through the photographer's mind, why they 
uh, selected that image, why they took it, under what conditions, just to learn a bit more about the photographer themselves and obviously the photograph that they put in there. Now, if I look at some of the other books that I've reviewed recently, there's Masters of Landscape Photography. Um, on a kind of similar book, you know, it features multiple landscape photographers, but that book did it a little bit better. It had um, obviously the, the bio, but also had a Q&A section as well, where you got to learn more about the photographer. And also they put commentary for each of their pictures. So that, that book had a bit more substance. You, you learned a bit more, it felt a bit more involved. Now I paid for this book myself full price. It was 25 pound, I think, five pound for postage package. I spent 30 pounds on this book. And, and again, while the photographs are really good, from some really well-established landscape photographers. I just didn't think it was good value for money. It just it just felt like a collection of light and land photography tutors and a, a selection of their photographs. It just didn't have enough in it for me to recommend it. So it's about time to wrap up this episode of On My Bookshelf. Hopefully this has been a, a helpful and interesting review for you. I mean, like I said, I did pay full price for this book, so I felt I had to give, my, give you my honest opinion. But if you do want to pick up a copy of Evolving Landscapes, there is a link in the video description below. Well, I do hope you enjoyed this episode of On My Bookshelf. And if you did, please do consider leaving me a comment below. I do try and read and reply to them all. And remember, if you want to see more content like this, remember to click on that subscribe button. And if you do, or if you're already a subscriber, remember to click on that little bell icon as well. That way you'll receive a notification as soon as I post up a new video. But until the next one, I'll see you then.